This time you'll be pleased to know it's too windy to hear what I'm saying. There's a few areas of progress to share, but nothing too complete, I confess. One of those bitty weeks without a single moment of triumph. You'll recall the solar charging shack, later to contain the wind charge controller as well. It's ready to be installed, but first I decided to cut out a viewing window in the front so I can see displays and lights on the devices without opening it up. I may also put a little thermometer behind the polycarb window. The shack has a solid steel brace on the side, and I'm going to use these robust gate hinges. They are smooth and quiet, plus the shack can be carefully lifted on and off, yet it's highly unlikely to do so accidentally, even if Alan inverts. If Alan does invert, I suspect my attentions will be needed elsewhere. Some extensive drilling into this well galvanised 6mm steel. The hinges shouldn't be too tricky to mount, and four bolts each is certainly overkill, but I'm not going to leave bolt holes empty. Their location on the bar is chosen solely to allow space at the ends, to bolt onto the boat's racking and for more brackets you'll see later. I'd never wish to question your memories, and indeed I'm certain many of you revise and re-watch Alan episodes on a weekly basis, but this is where it's going, in an otherwise dead zone near the main diesel tank. The tank needs mounting in properly in this position, not just strapped onto the foam, having pleased me greatly on sea trials earlier last year. Time for more drilling and I'm not going crazy with too many securing bolts, now I'm free to choose where and how many. This also reminds me I need to prime and coat the undersides of the plywood shelving. So much to do. It can get fairly dingy down here, so I'm quite enjoying using this new lighting setup, running uh, an LED light through the fuel tank, um, which also shows off how you can see the fuel level really, really well if you shine a light through it, through the translucent plastic. Anyway, this is going to be the zone where I'm going to install uh, my sort of swing box charging uh, station and I've already bolted it in up top I now need to, well if you see it's, it's still moving a little bit at the bottom I need to make sure that's perfectly vertical and then I can drill through here and secure it and then I can actually do the really fiddly job of mounting the box onto these two hinges because if it's if the um, the eyes, the, um, the metal eyes on the box are set too high it'll bash into the wooden top if it's too low, then it will scrape on the floor, so it needs to be at exactly the right level. You guessed, more drilling, at an even more annoying angle where applying pressure is awkward. Eventually though, another hole was created, and I saw that it was good. After some excellent bolting action from a jaunty angle, onwards with double checking the gate hangers sit nicely, and to work out how much of the huge 12mm eye bolts I need to keep hold of. They are overly long and will bump into the contents of the charge shack if not foreshortened. Wonder of wonders, I could put the infernal drill down for a moment and do some grinding instead. Yes, I know I didn't clamp it tightly enough, I didn't want to damage the zinc coat, but I'm aware the drooping motion ended up doing so anyhow. I have now bought myself a soft jaw vice, and no crude jokes please. Thank you. Let's say, having also drilled the large holes in the shack's bracket, I was somewhat committed in terms of the vertical positioning, if I'd screwed it up, so it collided with the floor or the plywood above, and perhaps got jammed before even being mounted, I'd probably have to start more or less from scratch. But in this event we, Alan and I, had unmitigated and quite satisfying victory. Yes, it's over-engineered, but uses materials I had to hand. It won't be left to swing loose, of course. The idea is for it to fold away and be secured with a clip to allow day-to-day -day storage in front of it, but still remain easy to get to if necessary. On to the next stage, the dividing wall. I'm mounting a white-faced solid board between this starboard half of the area and the other side occupied by the tank. Again, coloured white so it's easy to clean and reflects light, making visual inspection possible. This won't go all the way from bottom to top, as doing so will only create problems in shaping and fitting it, and not add any functional value. Being able to get a hand or an arm above or below it might prove useful in years to come. Alas. More brackets are needed, and so I delved into my large bucket of assorted metalwork from previous jobs. Many of these are galvanised or zinc coated, and it remains to be seen whether this causes corrosion headaches in future. I try and protect cut ends with paint or zinc, even though they are inside the boat, and there's an obvious cost saving versus stainless steel. Also, you seem to get a wider choice of objects made from normal steels. This is becoming a bit of a wrestling match. I'm getting towards the end of the life of some of my drill bits, 
and I'm kind of doggedly trying to get them through their final job. I just need to replace them and it's frustrating me a bit. Anyway, got these ready now, the two brackets are good to go. I just need to do the rest of the holes in the vertical uprights. Most verticals are upright, aren't they? <laughs> Eventually, the creation of holes in the right places was again complete, even after having to improvise how to apply constant pressure to a slow turning drill bit, liberally coated in cutting paste. I find some areas of steel inexplicably resist drilling. Perhaps I've accidentally work hardened certain parts from previous cutting or drilling, or maybe the steel merely has a sense of humour. I neatened the hole burring with a quick spin of a countersink and bolted on the brackets, spanner and a hexagonal bit in an electric screwdriver. Standard job as ever. Naturally we aim for a continuation of the flawless precision that's come to typify work on Allen, and indeed regarding all matters Allen concerns himself with. Perfectly level. I have an addendum to share with you about the solar system wiring, but I'll collate it into one coherent video later. I thought we'd go outside briefly, having been down in the belly of Alan for most of the episode so far. I noticed a slow leak after heavy rain from the top hatch of the repurposed sprinkler box, and in something perhaps less than a surprise, it turns out the seals have perished. They were brand new barely two years ago, after I replaced the hopeless original foam seal ring. I guess that the heat from the sun is accelerating their lifespan somewhat. I'm not messing around again, so I managed to get some correctly sized silicon rings sent over from you know where. Stock levels from UK suppliers are so unreliable at the moment. If these ones fail, I'll accept that my top hatch is haunted by a malevolent spirit and resort to sealing it up with duct tape. Next up, I look ahead to some secondary glazing excitement. I think you're probably going to notice that it's a bit too windy for me to talk you through this, so I'll move over to VO. Even my other anti-wind microphone came up short, so it is I, voice over Alex, once again. I want to secondarily glaze the window with polycarbonate to help with insulation and perhaps to solve the final major source of condensation. I've had the first one cut by a supplier as a test, and I'm requesting your assistance about mounting it. I don't want to bolt through or anything as serious, and have identified an excellent adhesive sealant, especially for polycarbonate, but there's a question about the other surface, the surround itself on Allen. Do I adhere directly to the polyurethane paint? Do I key it lightly with an abrasive first? Do I go all the way back to the fiberglass? It'll look quite a mess unless I then fit an edging on top. Unleash your input upon me in the comments section, please. Oh, and I'm still cutting holes in that searchlight mount. There won't be much left at this rate. Estimated date of completion, summer 2026. Especially if, like here, I'm interrupted for a long chat by the boatyard's resident raconteur. The evening did draw in, and so it's time to remind you about my other channel, arguably, where I'm a good way to having the second instalment ready for you. It would be great to hit the thousand subscriber mark over there soon. Anyhow, bye.